Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and today we're going to start working on a new project and it's going to feature uh, a Chow Bella collection. But what we're going to focus on right now is the base and this is going to be an explosion album. So what that means is it's going to have a removable lid, the four sides are going to fall away and then on the base of um, the box will be the pages. Because this is a, a baby album, it's going to be um, designed around the idea of the first year. So there's going to be 12 pockets in this. Um, so you've got one pocket for each month of the first year. Okay, so let me start by giving you uh, some of the dimensions. So you're going to need a total of five of these, six and a half by six and a half. And you'll need five because you need a base and then uh, one each of the four walls. So five, six and a half by six and a half. Four of the six and a half by six and a half, we are going to wrap just like this. So you're going to leave one of the edges open and that's how we're going to attach it to the base. So I'm going to go over wrapping one of these and then you're going to continue and do a total of four of these. <clears throat> and then you've got your base, which is the fifth one. You're not going to do anything with that right now. So cover four of these. And so what I've done is I've trimmed out my paper so that I've got a one inch border around it. <clears throat> and it just makes it easy to wrap, to wrap the, uh, the cardstock around it. I am using uh, Bright White from Astro Brights in 65 pound. And I found this at Walmart. Usually you can find black, cream, and white. And then of course they have these crazy, ridiculous glow in the dark colors. They don't really glow in the dark, but they're really, really bright. Uh, but I use the base colors. And I find that this is a very uh, good weight for wrapping your cardstock. And um, I also use it in the ba in the, the rest of the base album uh, because you're gonna be putting decorative paper on both sides. And I always use a pocket page and it winds up being sturdy enough. Okay, we're gonna burnish that real quick. And um, I love white for baby albums, but it is a pain in terms of trying to keep it clean. So you might wanna consider cleaning your surface area before you start. Okay, so now we need to miter the corners. And I use the tape tear tool. It turns out the tape tear tool is 1 8 inch thick, which is basically two, um, the width of two of these pieces of chipboard married together. So you can either use the chip, glue two pieces of chipboard together and use that as a spacer, or if you happen to have the tape tear tool, you can also use that. <clears throat> That's my dog. <clears throat> now again, we're going to fold over and secure three of the four sides. You're going to leave one side open. And I don't stress too much about getting a perfect triangle here because all of this is gonna get covered. But it is important that you don't cut too close to your corner. So I find when I use this, um, occasionally I'll still need to trim a little, but I never wind up short. So that's why I um, use my tape chair tool. Or if I didn't have that, I would be using a spacer made out of chipboard. <clears throat> all right, so we need to add some additional tape. And it looks like I'm about to run out. Hopefully we can get through this part of the of the build before I need to take a break and get some more tape, <clears throat> which I don't have here. I gotta run, run over to see Julie. I'm excited about this. I think this is gonna be a cute album. And uh, it's going to be easy to re repurpose too. Um, as far, the, the difficult part is going to be building the box. Um, once the box is built, we're going to have 12 pocket pages. <clears throat> and they're all going to be the same. Um, so as far as the album itself, it's, it's going to be a great album for a beginner. You could easily do this. And even the box isn't hard. It's just, it's just uh, tedious, I guess, is probably the better word. Okay. 
<clears throat> and again, right now we are working on what is going to be one of the fall away sides of the explosion box. So I'm going to leave this side open. I'm going to go ahead and close this side up. And you can see how there's a little bit of hangover. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck that in and fold it down. So I'm, I'm pushing it toward the chipboard and toward the center, like so. And then I'm going to fold this over. Hopefully you could see that. I noticed in my last uh, set of videos, I have to apologize, I wasn't paying attention. I got a new phone, so I'm using a different camera, and the default settings were not right, and I uploaded in a very low quality video. I won't, I'll make sure that I don't make that mistake again. So when this gets uploaded, it should be um, pretty high resolution. So when I come up to the camera to show you those details, hopefully you'll be able to see them because there's a couple of places where what I'm doing is pretty intricate and I, I think a close look goes a long way to helping you understand what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and add um, a tiny bit of tape on either edge. <clears throat> Just to make sure it's completely down. <clears throat> a little, uh, bead of glue would work as well. <clears throat> I, I'm going to try to stay clear of glue as long as I can because on white, as soon as I start working with glue, I'm such a klutz, I'll, I'll pick up some dirt and then drag it across my white. So I'm going to try to stick with tape as, as, uh, as much as I can for building the box and then only use glue when I'm adding the designer paper. Okay, now we've got this one side open. So again, you're gonna need a total of four of these. And I don't know why I put tape here. I got busy, I was sitting with my husband and talking at the same time I was doing this and I don't need tape there. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, it's gonna get covered with designer paper, but it's just one of those things. I'm not gonna waste my chipboard. I'll just uh, adhere uh, my designer paper with tape on this one. Okay, so we've got a total of four. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our base in and then we're gonna attach these four pieces like so, okay? So I'm gonna set these aside for now and we'll focus on one at a time. So this is gonna lay in just like so. So what I did on the last project, um, I kind of stood this up on its side and then pushed the chipboard right into it and adhered it, and then it came up with a space. So that's what I'm gonna do. So when you turn it on its side, you wanna make sure that that piece of chipboard is actually laying flat, and you've got a 90 degree angle, and then you're gonna push this in, adhere it with tape or glue, <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna use tape. So you're gonna push that in tight so you got a 90 degree angle. When it falls away, you'll see you have a nice space, okay? We're gonna do that four times all the way around. And I'm going to add another piece of tape here, like so. <clears throat> and you're not gonna do anything with this tape right now. We will use it, but we're not gonna do anything right now. Once we get all the four sides on, then we're gonna cover that um, space between the two with a hinge. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay, again, you wanna turn it on its side, make sure you've got a nice 90 degree angle and it's laying flat on its edge. You're going to take this at an angle, make sure it's centered top to bottom Press it next to the 
And there you go. See? And now you've got that nice little space. So when you go to um, put it in its uh, closed state, it's going to be a nice, nice, perfect little space. Okay. All right. Same thing here. We'll add another bit of tape. I learned a lot on the last box, so I'm making this look easy, but let me tell you, I had to build it, uh, I think, almost three times before I figured out the, the best way to do it and the easiest way to explain it. <laughs> okay, make sure those are tucked in. You're going to do the same thing. Make sure this is at a 90-degree angle, and then you're going to lay in the base, center top to bottom, push against it, press into place, and there's your nice, beautiful space. Okay, a couple more times. <clears throat> oh, looks like we'll be able to get at least this part done before I run out of tape. Then I gotta get some tape and take Nala for a walk. And I don't know if I'm going to get back to this today. i got to get my car in for service. Blah, blah, blah. Life. You know, that regular boring stuff. Okay. So when I'm turning it on its side, I'm also looking to see where that paper is falling and making sure that it's not sticking out. Um, and if it is, turn it in a little bit more. Okay. Get it flat, 90 degree angle. Lift your base and center it. It gets harder to center because you've got more, uh, more to deal with here. <clears throat> Looking good. Okay, here's our last one. And it, it does take up a lot of space on your um, craft working area uh, because it is basically 20 inches from top to bottom, left to right. So once we get this done, um, I'm going to set this aside. <clears throat> and then um, we'll work on the lid. Okay, I don't think I pushed these corners in, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> there we go nice and flat and if you come in it's hard to show this but what I'm doing when I bring the base in is I'm, I'm holding it at about a 30 degree angle so my tape isn't grabbing before I'm ready and then I'm shoving it into this and then I'm laying it down so uh, because of the angle of the camera I know that's not easy to see but that's what I'm doing And that gives me time to work on, uh, you know, top to bottom centering. Okay, so here's our our box. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hide all this. So we're going to make hinges that are going to go around on each side so that when we put our designer paper in, we'll see a white border all the way around. <clears throat> okay, so I don't have those trimmed out. I'm going to go trim those out. And they're going to be uh, two inches they're going to be, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm going to make them uh, the width of this panel, six and a half. I might trim it slightly below that because I want to make sure nothing's hanging over. So it'll be roughly six and a half by two, and we're going to go on the two inch side and score it in half. So you'll have half of the hinge up here and half of the hinge down here. And I'm choosing one inch because that's what the border is here, and it'll just make it look more uniform. Uh, although I am going to have a very, very tight uh, border. I'll probably have a sixteenth of an inch border once I put my designer paper down. So that's what I'm going to do is go trim out those uh, a total of four, six and a half by two, scored in half, and I'm going to do that dry fitting over each one of these to make sure it's not hanging off the edges. Okay? All right. I'll be back soon. Hey guys, it's Daphne. Uh, took a break. Uh, got my dog walked and had lunch with my husband. Now we're ready to go ahead and finish uh, the inside of this book. 
So I've got these strips, which are six and a half by two, and they're scored in half on the one inch line across the two inch side. So six and a half by two, you're gonna need four of those, and they're gonna go around the hinge areas. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Let me get my tool out. And I'm gonna be doing some rotating uh, to get these in. I have to think about that, yeah. All right, so I've already scored it, so I'm gonna place that score line right here uh, at the hinge. And then I'm looking to uh, center it left, right, and make sure it's not hanging off the edge of the explosion box. Okay, looks good. Okay. And I think I can go ahead and remove this tape backing as well. I should have done that first. I didn't realize it was going to hang over. <laughs> you shouldn't have to deal with this because if you're, this was a mistake, um, I shouldn't have these, this tape here. There we go. All done. Okay, now I'm going to remove the tape on the back side. And that's five eighths and then a quarter inch is what I did. And then on the side that goes here, I'm only doing five eighths since I already have a half inch here or three eighths. Okay, there we go. We're gonna bend that up a little bit and make sure it's operating. Um, go ahead and crease into, but be careful. There's a lot of depth there. You don't want to poke a hole in your paper. Okay, and it just needs to go to 90 degrees. That's all we're looking for here. Okay, I'm gonna rotate that around. We're gonna do the next one. Next side. Oh, I got a little off, but that's okay. I'm just going to trim that. I got distracted. My dog walked in. Okay. There we go. And then I'm just going to trim that off with um, a blade.
And that's another thing that needs to go on my shopping list. I am out of straight blades. So once you get this done, um, go around, make sure nothing's hanging over the edges because it might get snagged. Trim it off if it is. And make sure when it's you're folding it up that all the excess paper is going actually into the hinge area and not buckling on you. So you want it to turn down. Okay, everything's looking good. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up level with um, the wrap. So I've trimmed out um, some pieces of paper that are going to fit right there. I'll do this one, uh, and then I'm going to probably do the rest of them offline. You can use tape or glue here. This is going to get covered by designer paper. So this is going to fit like so. I'm going to trim it down so that actually fits inside this area. And then it'll be um, a flush surface. I'm marking it on both sides in case it's not straight. Oops. Should have done that before I took the tape backing off. Okay, now this should fit right inside. Like so. Okay, so now everything is pretty much on the same level. I'm going to do it on the rest of these. so on so we're going to repeat that on the remaining three and you guys can do this on your own when i get back we will start working on the lid hey good morning everybody it's daphne from scrap and create and we are working on this um explosion box and um later on i'm going to decorate it but right now we're just focused on getting the base of the explosion box done so i've got the bottom done that's what we did the last time we were together now um, what I'm going to do is make the hinge so I'm doing something a little bit different here because I've got 12 pocket pages my eight and a half by 11 um, the 11 inches is not wide enough to make a hinge that will um, hold 12 pocket pages so what I've done is I've taken two eight and a half by 11 and I trimmed them down to five and seven eighths by 11. So it's five and seven eighths by 11 and I have two of those. So I was fiddling around trying to come up with an idea of how to put these together so that the joint won't be exposed. And here's what I've come up with. I'm going to join them like this. This is going to be, this peak is going to be um, just like any of the other peaks where I slip a pocket on it. So the join um, where I'm joining these two pieces together will be completely inside of a pocket and you won't see it in the gusset. So that's kind of what I've decided to do. And I just scored a half inch from one side to the other and I'm gonna trim it to fit once we, um, uh, once we get 12 peaks. 
So basically, I'm going to join these two together and I'm going to do it like this side to side so that I can uh, make sure that it's, it's even. And then I'll start um, actually creating the peaks for the rest of it. Which we've done many, many times, so there's nothing new here. <clears throat> so I'm going to stack these two together. I want them to be even so that when I make my hinge, uh, the papers are not askew. Okay? That looks pretty good. So I'm going to burnish that. <clears throat> and there is our first peak. So the next, uh, the next groove on both sides is going to be a gusset. And then we'll create another peak, a gusset, and another peak. And we're going to continue until we have, um, I'm going to do six on one side and then five on the other because we've already got one done. Hopefully that makes sense. And this is kind of a slow, tedious process. So I'm going to get started with a couple. I'm going to pause. I'm going to do the rest. And then you'll see it finished in, um, with the tape on it in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to get this one done and show you. Okay, so there's our second peak, okay? So we're just going to continue. We're going to skip, do another one, and we're going to get uh, five more on this side, and then we'll do the balance on that side. Then we're going to put it into the base here, and then we're going to adjust and trim down um, what the excess that we don't need. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute, and it'll all be folded. Okay, everybody, I'm back. So I've gone ahead and done all my folding. Uh, I've got my peaks and my valleys here. And then on the flip side, I've got tape so that I can join my peaks. And then once we get that done, um, we're going to set it inside the book and see how it fits and trim accordingly. So there's, there's nothing new here. Um, it's the same hinge style that I'd make all my books with. Okay, so that's it. So we're just going to go all the way across. <laughs> Nala says, uh, good morning. And then I can tell when I'm done with this, I need to take a break and clean my surface because I can see I'm picking things up. Um, against the white so I want to be careful to keep my surface clean so that we have a nice clean white book when we're done <clears throat> there's the join so I've already got a peak there so I don't have to do anything skip that go to the next one there we go a couple more and we're Almost done. So we should... Ah! Ah! No, no, no! Be careful. Don't do that. <laughs> Luckily, we're going to trim the edge off, so it's not that important. But be careful. <clears throat> the more you do, the more it wants to curl on you. So do be careful as you're folding it over so you don't make the same mistake I just did. I think I'll go this direction. There we go. For the last couple, then I'm going to turn it over and burnish it both ways. Okay, here's all our peaks and valleys. Let's verify that we have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we do. <clears throat> I mentioned it before, but I am using Astro Brights in white. Um, I get mine at Walmart. I know it's not that easy to find for some people. Um, unfortunately, I looked and they don't ship it. Um, you can't buy it online and have it shipped to you, which is, to me is very odd. If they did, I'd that's how I get it um, and just buy it by the case because I go through so much of it. And when you build as many albums as I do, you 
you kind of get to a point where you standardize on the base color. So I use white, cream, black, and occasionally craft. Um, although I've got a little craft left over um, from my stash from many, many years ago from Michaels. And I used to like their cardstock and then they started getting it manufactured in China and it's not as good. Uh, and they also changed the color of the craft. The craft that they used to have was pretty much the same color as the chipboard. And now the craft that they have is much lighter and I just don't care for it. <clears throat> it's closer to what I would describe as a tan and this craft looks more brown to me, like a brown paper bag, which I liked better. <clears throat> anyway, there we go. So we've got our hinge ready. So I'm gonna pull in our, our album. And at some point you're gonna have to decide which, which side is the front and sides. But it is square, <clears throat> but I would take a look at the each one of the sides and see if there's one that you like a little bit better. Okay, so it looks like we need to trim off about, I'm going to I'm gonna leave a, a 3 8 inch gusset, I think. So the goal is to have it sit here, and when you go to close it, you don't have any paper in the hinge area. If you do, it's going to want to buckle. <clears throat> So I'm just going to do some pencil marks and I'm going to trim and I may have to do this a few times to get it where I want it. Now the base of the album is six and a half and our pages are six. So I'm going to look at it sideways so I can get it top to bottom even. So you're going to have some space on either side of the hinge. And then on either side this way. So it should be pretty even all the way around. I'm stalling because I was looking for a pencil. Okay. Okay. I think I've got that. Clear my space here. Got my Java. All right, sorry, I'm uh, marking it three eighths from the um, bottom of the first hinge. I'm gonna trim it. I'll show you. So it's just a little less than a half inch right here, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And basically, I'm using my pencil and marking it three eighths of an inch from the bottom of the hinge, and then trimming off the excess. And I'm doing the top and bottom. One, two, three. I'm marking the top and the bottom because the hinge doesn't want to lay flat in my trimmer. And then we're going to test it. And then if I need to trim more, I might actually just do it with a blade. Okay. There we are. And I do need to trim more. I can see if it's laying complete. I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there we go. I'm splitting it in half, and it looks like yeah, I need to take a sliver off. So my next one is I'm just gonna go a quarter inch on each side. It was three eighths, now I'm gonna go a quarter inch on each side and see how we do. I'm just going to use my grid real quick. That's a very simple mark. One on the top. 
or one on the bottom, one on the top. <laughs> I'm talking upside down. I'm lining my um, hinge, the top of this hinge, with the inch mark and then just doing a quick pencil mark at a quarter inch. Trim it. Trim it, trim it. Done it. We shall see. Yes, it did. Good. Okay, so we should be able to now just place this here, center it uh, side to side, top to bottom, and adhere it. So I still need to put tape on the back of that. So um, as with all my hinges, they are completely constructed with tape. Uh, that's what's holding these uh, peaks together. I also put tape across the whole back, and that's what's going to hold it into the book. The tape, um, I've, I've never had it fail. Um, in my books, I often reinforce the spine. Um, in this, the weight of the pages are going to be pushing onto the bottom of the box. So the likelihood of having um, a spine failure because it's laying flat is so low. So I, even though that's a lot of weight, 12 pages, I feel comfortable doing it because of the orientation of the book itself. Even when it explodes and it opens, you're going to um, you're going to want to flip through the um, pages almost like like a file folder. So you're not going to be tempted to turn it on its side and then place the weight of 12 pocket pages on the on the um, hinge. So that's kind of my thought process. That's why I feel like we can do 12 uh, pocket pages. It's not what I would recommend if you had a book that was either going to display. Uh, on its side because um, that's a tremendous amount of weight on the spine and the hinge. So that's what I'm thinking. I have not done this before so you guys will learn as I learn. Um, if there's any gotchas you'll see them and um, I'll do my best to make adjustments but then you'll have an opportunity to make adjustments in your design as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put tape on the back of this and get it centered and then set this aside. So I'll do that offline. Uh, the next time we get together, we're going to work on the lid. And then the last thing we're going to do is construct the actual pocket pages that go on here and insert them. Okay, so I'll get this uh, adhered, but I'm going to do that offline. I need to move everything out of the workspace, get the tape on it, and then pull it back in. So next time we get together, we'll work on the lid. I said that last time, and I forgot we hadn't done the hinge. Next time we get together, we really will work on the lid. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you guys soon. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create. I can see my cords hanging down in, in the uh, field of vision there, so I just straighten that up a little bit. We are working on the lid for our explosion box. I went ahead and put it together. It's, there's no big mystery here. What's important is getting the uh, dimensions correct, and I have those written down here, <clears throat> and I'll share them with you. So the base, the actual bottom of the box is six and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then there's a long side and a short side. <clears throat> I'm going to show this to you. Hopefully you can see it. So the long side is coming all the way um, to the edge of the box, and it extends just enough to cover the edge of the short piece, which is about a sixteenth of an inch. So the long side is going to be one-eighth inch longer, so you've got a sixteenth on each side than the short side. And the long side is six and seven eighths by two inches. You're going to need two of those. And then the short side is six and three quarters by two. So it's exactly the same size as the base album. Now it's important how you construct the box because uh, the size that I made this, um, the panels are actually going to get adhered to the side of this and they're not going to go on the top or the face of the board. So they're actually, and you can see where the seam is, so I laid down my base and then I added each of the four sides. So they are all on the same plane as the, the back chipboard. You're not gonna put these side pieces on top of the chipboard. They're gonna go to the sides, okay? So that's all done. <clears throat> and I just used my art glitter glue to put it together. It's kind of tedious to do for on camera because I'm holding things and you know time is ticking by and I'm not really doing anything. I'm waiting for the glue to set. So one of the things I did learn from um, uh, doing my research on building these boxes is if you have something to push against, it's very helpful. Um, and what I had seen uh, lots of people using is um, uh, books. So if you've got, um, you know, one or two inch book that you can push, you can push your 
side piece in and then come at it with the bottom piece and then that helps you get your right angle. I just did it freehand, but it will help you with your right angle. So if you've got something to push against it, I've also seen people use uh, a brick covered in foil or covered in some sort of fabric um, and it holds, holds it in place for you. So just some tips there. Okay, I'm gonna go over those measurements one more time. Six and three quarter by six and three quarter. The long side is six and seven eighths by two. The short side is six and three quarter by two. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover it with cardstock. Now, I don't have a big enough piece of cardstock to go all the way around and only have a single seam. So we're gonna have some multiple seams here. I'm using um, the Astro Brights white and it comes in a pack of eight and a half by 11. And um, I cut these down to five and a quarter and then that's the 11 inches, and then you're gonna score it in half. And let me tell you where half is. Where is half? Half is two and one eighth. Two and one eighth. Um, so you can either fold it in half or score it, and then you're gonna take that score line and you're gonna hang it right on the open edge of the box. So all this is gonna get tucked inside and cover the inside of the sides. And then this is gonna come around and cover, slightly cover the back. And then we'll place um, a, a, four, a square panel on top of it to finish the cover. So that is where we're headed. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some tape here and then I'm gonna lay this down. And then we're going to trim it so the sides will come down for us. So let's get some tape on here. You can um, do tape or glue. I'm gonna do tape. Um, I, I generally prefer tape, um, but the other reason I'm using tape is white is not very forgiving uh, with glue. And um, I've also noticed that even though this is 65 pound, it feels lighter than that, and so I'm worried about it warping. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm just going to avoid putting glue on it and just use tape. And we're going to do both, uh, both sides. And um, when we fold it over and start to cover the inside of the sides, the inside of the lid in here, I am going to use glue because it's just way too hard to deal with tape on the inside. <clears throat> and I don't, I'm not so worried about any warping. Um, if it happens, it's going to be in a place where it's not, you're not going to notice it. But I am going to be careful with how much glue I put in and I'm probably even going to smear my glue around a little bit just to make sure it's an even plane. All right, well, I'm gonna brush this with my hands because I am i don't wanna be put too much pressure on top of my box and cause it to collapse. Although it feels pretty, pretty rugged. Okay, so we're gonna take off this tape packing. Beautiful day here in San Diego. All my boys are out. My husband and my son took off for the weekend and I've been here by myself, which I always look forward to, but then it seems like the minute they're gone, I miss them. <laughs> it's a weird feeling. Can't seem to settle on that. Um, okay, so we're gonna take that score and it's gonna go rest on the inside. And I'm just looking to get it kind of centered. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but... There we go. We'll push that in place. Now we're going to turn it outside and then we're going to draw some lines here. And that's where we're going to trim. So I'm going to place my ruler right up against the box and I'm going to draw on the inside edge of this ruler. So basically I'm drawing a straight line from the edge of the box to the edge of the paper. And by placing my ruler right here, that helps me figure out where to trim it. And I do that on both sides. There we go. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and hand trim this. You can use um, a blade if you prefer. My hands aren't working this morning. 
Everything's a little stiff. I think I stayed up too late. I fell asleep on the couch, and that's never a good thing. Yeah, I think I'll use my bigger scissors. And then I think I need to take a break because I need to clean my glasses. I'm having a hard time seeing my line. Okay, so I cut right up to the box, not past it, just right up to it. This, uh, this side is much easier to see. Pardon me. So now you can see it's going to fold over nice and neat for us. So that's one of the things that we were trying to accomplish. <clears throat> oh, one of the other things, um, if when you put your box together, if your corners don't go together perfectly or if it's a little off, um, don't panic. Hit it with an emery board. I did that. Um, one of my corners um, was just slightly off. It, it exceeded slightly. So I just hit it with a an emery board, some uh, uh, sandpaper, and then you can even it up real quick. Okay, now I'm gonna fold these edges in. I'm not gonna adhere them just yet. I'm just gonna start training the paper to come around. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna show you a mistake I made, and I'm not gonna redo it, but I wanna show you, I overcut and now you're going to see a little bit of it right there. Um, I'm going to do what I can with adhesive to try to mask that. But when you're trimming these edges, you want to stop at the box. You don't want to go, you don't want to exceed it. So that was a mistake I made. On the rest of them, they look fine. Um, but be careful. Don't over trim. Yeah, the rest of them look okay. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to bring that real close so you can see I slightly cut, over cut. So I'm going to put some glue in there and try to, and hope for the best. Um, but I am not going to redo it. Okay. <clears throat> so now these are folded. So the next thing is this is going to come all the way down and be tucked like so. And we're going to need to do a little bit of trimming, but right now I'm going to just snug it into the corners so I can see where I need to cut. So you can see a ripple here and a ripple here. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna pull this back out, we're gonna go in with the scissors and we're gonna miter that slightly. Right where we saw the um, the paper buckling. And uh, this is a little fussy, so be prepared to test it and trim it, test it and trim it until you get it where you're happy. And I think I'm pretty reasonably happy with that. I think I can get that to flatten down. Now you can see because of the way we trim the paper, there's a little bit of excess paper that's coming around to this side. And that's deliberate, because when we come down, we're gonna trim this a little, we're gonna trim this so that it doesn't overlap. It's just gonna lay straight in the corner. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But this is exactly what we want. We want it to be ever so slightly coming up onto the side, okay? And by drawing the line on the outside of the box, that's how we achieve that. So now, <clears throat> tuck these in. These are going to come down, but as you can see, they're covering this edge. So what we're going to want to do is trim a sliver off so that it goes straight down um, without any interference. Okay. Before I do that, I think I want to go ahead and glue down these sides. Um, so that there's, I know when I come back and up and over, there's no buckle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm using, just using my fingers to etch this on the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and glue it down. Okay, and I am going to use glue, not tape. <clears throat> Ok, 
이렇게 perfect okay now we're gonna have a lot of paper build up here so what I'm gonna do is miter these uh, so we so we can minimize some of that um, you can try to miter both but I don't have very good luck with that so I'm just gonna miter the one and then it'll look prettier um, and it'll help with some of the build up and then I have to worry about any gaps uh, for, of my chipboard showing so in order to get a decent miter I'm gonna use my triangle <clears throat> and draw a quick line as a reference and I'll use that uh, because it's going to be slightly exposed even though even when we put a panel on top I'd like the uh, the miters to be uniform <clears throat> if that makes sense so I'm trying to make sure they both are nice 45 degrees Cut that. I think I'll use my smaller scissors. So there's my two mitered corners. I'm going to go ahead and glue those down now. Tuck that paper in. I'm going to hit this with an eraser at some point as I got. Or, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll get that with an eraser. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this side down too. Okay. Looks good. Same thing. And by the way, I'm I'm looking and I don't see any uh any warping with my art glitter glue here so that's good news so now you know but I am always a little weary with white it just even though like I said it's 65 pounds for some reason when there's no ink saturating the paper it just feels uh, lighter thinner okay I'm going to show you my corner that I made my boo-boo on so you can see how it turned out I'm coming closer here so I, I definitely need to hit this with an eraser but you can see uh, sorry I was off camera uh, you can't even see the split anymore because uh, I put a little bit of glue there and just sort of pinched it together so it's not as pretty as this side but there you go and again with the glue you got to be careful with white because you pick up everything um, on your hands and it's very easy to uh, stain your white okay so lift this up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do <clears throat> is from the corner of the box toward at a 90 degree angle I'm going to etch this with my finger yes yeah, and that's going to help me figure out where I need to trim this so I'm holding it in place. It's going to wrap around like this. Do I have... No, I, I guess I don't have my spatula. So I'm, I'm worried I'm in my own way. So I'm going to etch a, a line from the corner at a 90 degree angle toward the center of the box. And that's going to help me when I go to trim this piece off. I want to trim along that line. Okay, and I, I know I want to stop right where that where I just cut. So you can use your fingernail to guide it, or you can do what I'm doing, which is just a small sliver of a cut. 
and you just want it right there on the corner because all we're going to do, sorry, I drank too much caffeine today and I'm having a hard time, is we're going to cut a sixteenth of an inch off and stop right where I made that little slit. <clears throat> and it's very difficult to see, and I can't really help you, but you can see where I've got a little bit of a, a slit here. I'm going to come down and trim this off. And then the, the whole idea is basically the width of this is what we're shaving off here. So it's going to free fall and not get bound on the side. <clears throat> and I would rather cut twice than overcut. <clears throat> and it looks like I need to cut a little more, but you can see where I've got that slight mitered corner and then this is going to come down. So I'm going to take another sliver off. Okay, let's see how we did. Yep, see, now that's gonna fall straight down. And then see how neat the corner's gonna look? Okay, so that side's done. Now we're gonna trim this side, and then we're gonna glue everything in place. <clears throat> so I'm just cutting that diagonal where I where I tried to cut it with a blade and, and with my nail. Um, And I'm going to cut right up to that point and a little more. And that looks good. So there we go. So I'm going to lift up. The back panel goes in first because it needs to come around the side slightly. can't see what I'm doing and I apologize but I just put glue down now I'm going to burnish everything in place and then I'll show it to you as soon as I can lay it down there now I'm going to push all that into the corners get my lip down Now we're going to get these sides in. We're going to repeat this whole process back here. Ok, 
Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing coming around here, and then the last thing we're gonna do is measure out how much this uh, of a strip we need to add to cover this part of the box. Of course, we won't have to do any corners. It'll just be a strip that comes through here. Okay, so again, we're starting with five and a quarter by 11. And then we're going to take that score line and rest it on the open side of the box like so, and then and install it just like that. Okay, it'll be just a minute. Now on my last project, I did an album in a box and I put a link to um, Sage Reynolds channel where I did a lot of research and learned the techniques that I'm showing you right now. And I highly recommend going to take a look at his channel. He does a really good job. There's a couple of times where it's kind of hard to see what he's doing because his hands or the angle of the camera is not really where you want to see, but he does a good job of explaining it. And um, he's an excellent box maker. So if you like this kind of thing, if you really like building these dimensional projects, I really recommend going there. He's got um, what they call clam shell box and some other items. Anyways, it's worth uh, taking some time to go over there and look at his channel. I really enjoyed it. Um, I learned a lot. Learned a lot. Okay, same thing. We are going to draw a line. We're going to press our, our ruler against the box and we're going to draw a line on where we're going to trim this, both sides. <laughs> I might have to take a break. My hands are so shaky. Good grief. Goodness. Okay, so... I need to bring the box towards me to trim these, so um, I'm just gonna cut these slivers. Remember, stop at the box, don't go past the box. can uh, fold these over like so. Okay, I'm gonna start by laying down this piece. I'm gonna miter those two corners and then lay down the sides. And since we've already done it once, I'm not gonna go over every single detail and I'm not gonna keep pulling it up to the camera. If you get a little lost, you'll need to back up and look, uh, go look at the first one we did. my triangle to make my 40 degree angle here. We'll get the sides glued down.
Heidi. Remember the, the long piece is what's gonna come around, slightly come around the sides. <clears throat> so we're just gonna work it into the corners. Be careful pushing in because you don't want to go through your paper. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and glue it down. this last bits into place and then we'll trim these and fold them in glue them down almost there guys So I want to show you that one more time. So you can see there's a slight 90 degree cut where I've mitered toward the corner and then I cut the sliver off. And see how that's going to fold down nicely and give us this beautiful finished corner. <clears throat> that is one of the things I definitely learned from Sage Reynolds' channel, that technique. And it, it works. I mean, um, I was... When I was looking at it, I was like, how do they trim? How do they know where to trim? You know, how do you measure that? <clears throat> and that's uh, that was the technique he used, and I, I swear by it. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna do it one more time over here. This side's always harder for me because I'm in my own way uh, with the scissors. You'll find that too, one side's gonna be much easier to trim than the other. I can already tell I'm gonna to need to take off more. Now I'm just cutting back on that angle where I used the um, blade to try to etch, etch it. And you can see there's that slight curve. I need to take off a little bit more. Ah. <sighs> 
almost easier to do it left-handed, I think. Again, when you're pushing this in, be careful pushing it into the corners. You don't want to tear your paper. Okay, now we're going to measure these two and we're going to um, put a strip there. So it's going to need to be uh, five and a quarter. We're going to start with five and a quarter, and then we're going to uh, figure out how wide it needs to be. <clears throat> and then again, this needs to be scored in half, so I'm just going to fold it in half. And then we're going to rest it right here. And we are going to, oh, you know what? I guess I didn't do five and a quarter. Or I did it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I did it the wrong way. This way, five and a quarter in half. There we go. And then it's going to wrap around. So we're going to do that two times. And I'm trying to decide right now if I'm going to overlap or if I'm going to try to make the seams meet. I'm, I'm not sure yet. We're going to look at it and see if we can trim it. That would be ideal where there's no overlap. And I'm afraid we're not going to get a perfect seam. Um... But that would be ideal, like so. But I think it's going to be impossible to get a perfect seam. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it like this. So we're going to have some overlap. And we're going to live with it. <laughs> so I'm going to try to center this here. And I'm going to get some glue on it. Oops, I did the wrong side. But this is easy because there's really no trimming. You just need to glue the whole thing down. Like so. Now, ideally, you'd have one long piece of paper that could go all the way around. You'd have a single seam, but we don't have that. Um, and I think that's why, you know, a lot of boxes are covered in fabric because you can get, you know, nice wide pieces. So basically, this is five and a quarter by four and a quarter is what it wound up being. It doesn't have to be that wide. That just happened to be the piece of paper I had sitting there. 
So that's what I used. You can make it narrower if you want. And I'm not measuring this, I'm just eyeballing the center. There it is. So we are going to, um, of course, have a designer piece of paper on top of here. And then we're gonna put a designer piece in here. We are not gonna decorate the sides um, just because it's too uh, it's too easy for the paper to get hung up when you're taking it off and on the um, explosion box. So speaking of the explosion box, <clears throat> Put it all together. There we go. There's our box. It's snug. Um, so we'll see. Once I get it decorated, if I have to make measurement adjustments, I will come back and let you guys know that. Um, because we are going to have designer paper on the outside here. So we will see. Okay. That's it for now. Finally got the box done. Now it's going to be time to start decorating.